I'm curious in your experience with talking to a bunch of entrepreneurs, have you talked to or met people who think that that's, you know, once you start entrepreneurship, that's all there is and you don't have to get better? Yeah, I think most, you know, I think uh, we've talked about this before where I think I see this with photographers. I see this with entrepreneurs, like self-publishing. I'm sure you see it with writers. Like there used to be gatekeepers. If you're a writer, it's a publisher. If you're a photographer, it's a publisher. If you're an entrepreneur, you know, it's a, a fund or like there's some sort of barrier to entry where it's pretty hard actually to even get started. You know, we've, we've talked about on this, on this, you know, channel, on this account that I've started a company in eight hours conceived of, launched, executed, and sold a product of a company in eight hours. You know, if you're a photographer, you can spin up an Instagram. And um, and so I think a lot of people think that entrepreneurship is just like having the courage to have an idea and to push it out into the world. Or a question I get asked all the time, like oddly, is how much does it cost to start an app? How much do I need to start an app? I'm like, wrong question. Starting the app is actually the number might surprise you how low it is. You need developers and people in place for the next year to iterate the app so that it doesn't die. And so the way bigger expense is from day 10, you know, from launch date to a year from launch date, as opposed to the two months prior to launch where you make a simple version of the app and get it out there. That might only be 10 or $15,000, but it might cost you a hundred to actually iterate to a product that works. And I, I think most people just think I make an app and I put it out there and it's done and it will succeed or won't, but it, it's done. And I actually can't think of an example like that where a product of any kind that I know of hit the market and it just worked. Even the most successful hockey stick overnight success companies if you double click on that hockey stick, there were immense periods of doubt, pivoting, uncertainty, plateaus, failures, any company. So I think people miss that. Why is getting better so important to you? I think because it's the difference between success and failure in life. And I also think like, you know, a famous entrepreneur who was the CEO of Zappos and a famous investor died tragically in a fire a couple months ago. And he talked about the key to happiness. And it's one of the most beautiful quotes I've ever read. And what one of the things he mentioned was perceived control and perceived purpose and perceived progress. Um, and there are a couple other things he talks about, but, you know, perceived progress. We've talked about that before. It doesn't really matter where you start but just feeling like you're getting better along a continuum, no matter where you start, you could be a minimum wage waiter at a, at a Applebee's and getting that promotion or being employee of the month or getting a compliment from your boss, like that'll make you happy. You could be a multi-billionaire and come up with a new idea or a new way to iterate or stay ahead of your competitors. And that can make you happy. But the billionaire, if he, he or she just stays where they are, or the Applebee's worker, they will not be happy. And so perceived progress and purpose, feeling a part of something or believing in something bigger than yourself. These are two things that I, he says, and I agree, uh, align very closely to happiness. So getting better is like we all, if we have these sort of um, um, Mav, 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 Maslov, Maslov's hierarchy of needs, you know, shelter, food, you know, water, you know, very basic necessities, we could all subsist. We can all just exist and sort of float along. And that's fine, you know. But I think if you want to be happy in this life, you need to take on a challenge. And you need to iterate and make yourself better. And that iteration and movement and dynamism is what gives you a perceived experience of progress, of fulfillment, of purpose. And so without a challenge and without iterating in the quest for that challenge, there's that famous song, you know, the harder the battle seems, the sweeter the victory. It's like something comes super easy to you or you're just lying on a beach or, or you do just sort of fail into success. 
success unto itself doesn't make you happy. It's actually the toiling, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. So iteration is how you achieve success, I think, in 99 out of 100 times, you know, but also it's how you're happy along the way. And no matter how you come to the success, the success itself, you know, the end, it's not about the end, it's about the journey. It's, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. What does getting better look like for you, both on the day-to-day -day and in the long-term? We've talked before about like David Goggins, or it's really a, a stoic approach, which is like negativity, failure, uncomfortability, pain, desire, the absence of what you want. Um, we all view that as a negative thing. I want more, I deserve more, I, I didn't get what I wanted, I'm, or I'm in pain or I'm suffering. I think if you can learn to view that as, okay, this is, again, we've talked about this before, when, when you're on a run and you're in pain or you're lifting weights and you feel un physically uncomfortable, we know that that's a good thing. It's in service of getting so much better. And I would encourage people to psychologically or entrepreneurial, entrepreneurially think the same, which is to suffer, to be challenged, to iterate, to be not enough is actually, it's in those moments of uncomfortability that you're forging yourself to become better. And so I think that's a big hack for me to become better is to have that initial reaction of I'm uncomfortable. I just failed. I didn't get something I wanted. And the second I start feeling sorry for myself, rewire it into this is making me better. I'm a better entrepreneur. I'm stronger. I have more scars. I have more, you know, I have more to say for myself. I've hardened myself. Right. So it's like gut reaction is I'm, I'm down. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I'm vindictive. Second reaction immediately following is thank God this just happened because it's going to make me stronger and I'm going to come back better. And if you can just try to rewire that pathway, you start to actually fall into the second pathway, which is something bad happened. And you're like, cool. Okay. I'm going to beat this. Here's how, like, I remember maybe this is like a privileged anecdote, but I remember you know, traveling with my family as a kid and following my mom like a little duckling through through an airport, say. And then I remember at age 17 or something flying by myself for the first time and not thinking twice about it and then getting to the airport and having a sudden wave of panic. Like I've never done this before. I mean, a huge airport. I've got to go somewhere very far away from my home. my home. What do I do? And then I looked up and there was like very clear signage of what to do. And I remember getting confused at one point. I'm like asking a person that looked official, you know, a TSA agent or something like what, you know, do, do I go here? And they're like, yeah, you know, and I was just like, oh, follow the signage, ask for help when you need it. And traveling is actually like kind of easy. And it was this huge, like, okay, now I could like go anywhere. I'm free, you know, and not that I've traveled that much, but like, it became clear to me in that moment that I had the ability if I wanted to, to go anywhere. And I think in entrepreneurship, when you realize that any problem is fixable, if you don't emotionally become overtaken and you thoughtfully walk through your options and choose the best one, and you can unwriggle yourself out of any knot. And that becomes very intoxicating. Like hit me with your best shot because I haven't been beaten yet. And this company won't fail until I give up and I'm not going to give up. Do you think that there's any way in which sometimes entrepreneurs try to get better, but they're doing it wrong? And what does doing just trying to get better in the wrong method look like? I, you know, maybe I pushed this a little hard, but I think entrepreneurship is, is like a nice metaphor for life. And so it's the same way that people in life, I think, fail or try to get better in, in the wrong ways, which is using external validation as your, you know, I have a puppy and I'm training her with treats, right? So you train a dog to do what you want, sit or walk on a leash by treat, 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 and kind of pulling them along, right? And when the treats that you're chasing are like promotions, wealth, fame, what other people think of you, 
you know, you end up somewhere, but it's usually not where you could have or should have ended up if you'd listened to what you wanted. You're simply getting Pavlovian conditioned like a dog to do things that make you more money, get you more famous, get your boss to like you, make other people happy. And you're sort of killing your internal self the whole while. So the entrepreneurs that fail are the ones that are, every entrepreneur is headstrong and cocky and confident and they deeply believe in their thing because you have to. And every entrepreneur has at least some, and in my case, a lot of deep insecurity. And when that insecurity wins and you're so desperate for the TechCrunch article where you raise 6 million bucks or, you know, this thing or, you know, something along the way that like enables <gasps> you to come up for air and gasp that oxygen after being underwater by yourself and scared and like running out of oxygen, like that's when you lose is when you like you got to hold your breath, man. You got to stay down there. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in the thing. You got to follow the internal markers of what you feel is success. And if you're just chasing what VCs, what venture capitalists say, or what TechCrunch says, or what your friends think, then you're building the company for someone else. And somewhere along the way, your passion will flame out and you'll burn out and the company will die in most cases. So I think if you're trying to change or iterate or grow on someone else's metrics, you usually lose. And if you're trying to change or iterate or grow on your own metrics, you don't always win, but you have a much higher chance.